Oh dear, it seems that my <laughs> stream setup has gone wonky. Um, let me fix that. <laughs> there we go. Hopefully you all can hear me. Um, if you can't hear me, can't hear me, let me know in the chat. Um, got some music going, that seems to be working nicely. Let's turn the volume down just a tad. Hey Jay, I think it's Andrew. I think it's Andrew. <laughs> it says loud and clear. So thank you, Andrew, if that is you. I'm terrible at remembering names, friends. So sorry if I get it wrong. <laughs> All right. Um, today we are testing out WordPress 6.5 again. Uh, I did this last week. No, last last week, two weeks ago. Um, so if you want to catch that, you can find it here under YouTube. Um, so I'm going to copy that link into the chat if you want to watch the last session I did on this. Uh, today I'm going to continue doing some testing. What's nice about today is that Anne uh, McCarthy has posted her 6.5 source of truth. So we can use that to kind of pick through and see what's all available there. Um, the What's New for Developers has also been published. That was published the day after my last live stream. Um, so that includes new things coming to WordPress. Um, so these are the two docs that I usually look at when I'm looking at new developments. Or I check out the, um, the dev, the 6.5 uh, tag. I think it's 6.5 dev notes. Uh, I can't remember it now. No, I linked it up last week. Let's see if I get it right. No, it's not that one. <laughs> That's annoying. Um, it's be one there somewhere. It's not, no, it's very six hyphen five dead notes. Nope, it's not that one either. Uh, let's see if I can find one. Here we go. Oh, it's, it's dead note six point five, six hyphen five. There we go. So that's, that's those those are the three that I usually look through when I'm looking for music. So let me share those links if anybody wants to check them out. It's the source of truth. It's the what new what's new for developers. Uh, those come out every month, so those are usually good to check out. And then anything related to dev notes. Those will be all the things that are coming. Um, I don't usually follow the dev notes unless the source of truth hasn't been published yet. Um, and is great at publishing these around about the RC release candidate time. Um, so this is usually what I work off. Uh, and then I'll just go through and I'll just see what's interesting, see what's coming, have a play with it. Last week we played with the, what was it? Let me see if I can remember. Um, it was the block attributes and custom fields, for the block bindings API. We worked on, we, we played around with that last week. Um, and we played around with the plugin dependencies feature, uh, which is over here. Um, so if you want to see those, check out that YouTube video that I shared earlier. Uh, I'll share it again later towards the end of the session. Today I'm going to jump around a little bit, see what else might be interesting. Uh, we might, I have done, I have done a session on the interactivity API, so I might not have a look at that. Um, but I'm just going to kind of run through some of these, just see what's interesting, what's coming. Before I do that, though, I need to update my WordPress version. Um, so there's usually a help test WordPress post in the in the core site somewhere. Um, WordPress release day, code trees, release party, help test. There, help test WordPress. There it is. Um, so that was the last beta. Hmm, I want a newer one. So let's just do a search for help test 6.5. see. And here we go, that's beta. Okay. 
the phone right now. I'm, I'm basically I'm looking for the the WordPress the WPCLI command. Uh, let's see if I've got it in my history somewhere, my bash history. <laughs> Uh, oh, there it is. <laughs> cool. Uh, so what RC are they going to be on now? Let's have a look. Um, definitely an RC stage already. Let's think what they have from here. Oh, they're on RC3. Okay, so we're on RC3. So, um, hey Carolina, welcome to the chat. Um, I'm busy trying to remember how to update my WordPress version of these WPCLA. Uh, sites, let's go with WordPress. And then we can run that, and it should be RC3 if I actually. So let's see if that works. Yay! I wonder what happens if you go RC4 if it doesn't exist. <laughs> Should we find out? Uh... John says hello from Chicago. Hello, John. Welcome. We're busy updating WordPress using WPCLI. I just increased the music volume a little. Oh, this is taking a while. Um, it says it's updated. Okay, it's done. <laughs> of course, as I checked it, it finished. Um, I want to see what happens. Hey Alan, welcome. Uh, I want to see what happens if I got RC4. Oh, there is an RC4 apparently. Okay. <laughs> I must have missed that. Ah, maybe there is an RC4. Okay. That's interesting. So it looks like it looks for it, tries to download, it doesn't find it. Interesting. Um, I want to have a quick look in the Slack. Pretty sure. Yeah, we're definitely on RC3 list. Uh, let's see what happens if we go Pull this into screen just to check me slack with you. Um, here was the last call chat. Yeah, RC3 definitely looks like the last upgrade that was run. Okay, so we're running on the latest version. Cool. Um, RC3. All right. So, this release brings with it many, many, many things. Um, and the first one I want to check out is the font library. I want to see how that works. Because I haven't been following it, actually, to be honest. Um, so, to do that, I am going to create my own plugin, my, my, plugin, my own theme using create block theme. So I'm going to add create block theme quickly. Um, let's 
the beauty of these live stream sessions. I can just literally just do whatever I want. <laughs> no prep work. If you don't want to have fun uh, and let people watch your live streams, you're a great way to do it. Okay, so <clears throat> create block theme is installed and active. Come on. This is one of my biggest bugbears. This doesn't show that it's busy being activated when you activate it from here. Might still be silly. You watch it all finish as well. Oh, it is activated. Oh, okay. <laughs> I get it now. Okay, so grade block theme is activated. So let's go and Use create block theme to create a new theme. I'm going to create a blank theme. Um, we'll call it John's awesome theme. <laughs> and then the rest I think we can just leave. So let's generate that theme. Oh, the name cannot contain the word theme. Okay. John's awesome thing. <laughs> That's interesting. I didn't know that was a requirement. Um, all good. Okay, so that's created. So if we go over to themes, there's my awesome theme. Oh look, it actually creates a default create block theme thumbnail for me. That's kind of cool. So now let's deactivate create block theme. Uh, so I've got no plugins enabled. There's my awesome theme. Let's activate it. Let's take a look at what the code looks like. Uh, there's my awesome theme. It has read me it has a screenshot it has a style of css it has a theme for json awesome it has an index template excellent that's all it should need and it has photo and helicopter it's perfect so it's the most basic of themes you can get um all right so now i'm guessing if i go into the editor styles system fonts, manage fonts. Okay, so I can manage fonts from there. And I can install fonts from Google Fonts. Um, now I know that the whole Google Fonts thing is, some people don't like Google Fonts, I understand that. I also understand why um, we're sort of making it available to those that are using Google Fonts. I also like the fact that this allows you to download the fonts so they're not being posted externally, which is kind of the point. But I think we'll try both. I think we'll do a we'll do one of these. So here we go. Okay. Um need to come up with a font name now. Let's think of a random let's type in the word bird and see what comes up. No, that won't work. <laughs> I mean we can select any one of these fonts from here. Um that's interesting. It's paginated. Um Think of the fun word I would. Okay, let's go for Alerta Fancy. No, no it doesn't have any variant. Let's find, let's go for Almari. Almari has lots of variants. There we go. So let's go for 300 normal, 800 normal, why not? And then let's install these fonts. Now, I seem to remember there was a conversation around where the fonts are going to be installed. I think they're going to be installed in the uploads directory. I think that was the, the final agreed upon decision there. So let's see. There was an error installing fonts. Oh dear. Okay. Um, I wonder why that is. So it created the fonts directory and it downloaded something. Uh, I wonder if we can see in the console what the error is worth to. So let's refresh this. This could very well be something to do with my local environment, I'll be honest. My local environment is a bit weird and wonky. So I will definitely blame my environment before. Oh, it actually installed the font. Interesting. I wonder if it failed downloading other variants. That's possible. Um, Let's search for another bit. Let's go R one cents and let's go first and do a full. Now that seemed to work. 
Okay, so then I'm going to say that the problem is the font. Um, so let's take Omari and delete it. And then let's try and install it again. Oh, clearly that wasn't out of spot. Um, Uh, so let's go, what are we? We're in 300 and 800. So again, let's try and install that again. This time it works. Okay. So, hmm, I wonder if. No, that's not what I meant. <laughs> I wonder if that was my kid's hockey toe. <laughs> uh, what's up, chat? I wonder if there was a problem creating the directory the first time around. It seems to be okay now. Um, it's a pity I didn't see what that error was the first time, but it does seem to be working now, so could have been a red glitch at the time, could have been a red network issue, I don't know. Interesting. Okay, but that does seem to work. So now, theoretically, if I click on text, I should be able to, there we go, I should be able to choose a Mari. Um, well, let's, yeah, let's do all the text. Let's switch it to arrow and sets moved. And save that. Yeah, that, that did change. Yes, let's change. That's the system font. That's the default. Yeah, they are changing. Awesome. That's cool. Um, okay, so it installs it in the WB content fonts directory. I know there was there was some discussion around this, and there were concerns. Should go to uploads. Should it be in fonts. I know there was a whole conversation around that. I don't know what the final resolution was. Obviously, the final resolution was destroyed in fonts. Don't know. <laughs> um, but that does seem to work well. The naming convention, I wonder why it's named like this. I wonder if this is a... This can't be a Google Fonts thing, surely. Let's have a look. Let's go to Google Fonts. And let's search for... Um, is. And let's go front, let's download. I just stick this on my desktop. Um, I'll go to my desktop. Yeah, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't have that weird name. So this is obviously something that WordPress is doing. Um, I wonder why they're doing this. Interesting. Interesting to know why. Seems 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 to me unnecessary in a way. Um, why not just include the names from Google Fonts? Maybe it's the way the Google Fonts integration works. Could be. I don't think anybody other than me would care because I don't think anybody installing a font through the editor would actually care about that. Um, I just like to know that. You know, like which one of these two is Alamari, which one's the other one. So it would be better for me if it was renamed differently. So that's an interesting design choice. Um, I wonder there might be a bug about this. I wonder if it's, I wonder if it's worth opening an issue about this. Mm, I don't know. It's just, it's interesting. It's an interesting discovery. I would have preferred to have kept the names um, as per where they're coming from. Uh, so. What is interesting is that it's downloading the WAF 2 version, so maybe it's downloading through something that converts it, and that's what gets the name like that, possibly. Uh, I don't know the I don't know the integration, I don't know why. But from a using the uh, editor point of view, it does work pretty well. Um, I was surprised to discover that you can only do it through the styles. It does make sense. I mean that's where I would expect to find it. Um, but I kind of also I kind of also expected to find it having its own top level um, menu item. So I guess that's a that's a UX choice. Um, like I said, yeah, it would be cool if there was a fonts sub menu, and then you, because now you've got to go set topography, and then there you click on fonts, and then it pops it up. Um, but again, that's that's not my decision. <laughs> it's just it's what it was decided. So that, that does work and that's cool. 
Um, so what I do want to do now is I want to re-enable the create block theme plugin because this also has a font manager option. Um, and what's interesting is if you have a look here, it only includes the system font. So currently, if you manage fonts through this, these are going to be installed on the same font. There's the same font. And these are going to be added to my theme. Which I honestly still prefer, if I'm honest. Um, however, if we so if we go back to the editor now um, and we apply a font, I want to see what happens. So let's add a system font. And make it Armorai. So that's now our system font. So that's saving to custom styles. Cool. Now let's save these changes. So these changes will get saved to my theme files. Okay. Theme changes saved. Okay. So what this means is if I go into my theme, it's going to have specified the files. Right. So that's not great because now those fonts are not part of the theme. So if I export this theme, so this functionality that I'm showing you here is the create block theme functionality. It's not core functionality. But if I export this zip, actually let's, let's create a new theme. Why not? So let's go John Sawson Fun Club. <laughs> so now we'll have a separate theme. Um, okay. I'll copy on the server and activate it. Yes, that's what I want. Okay. So now that's my active theme. Which is where I found that. Yes. Um, so now if I go into that theme. I want to see what's going to happen. That's still pointing to the fonts that are installed globally. So if I take this theme and stick it somewhere else, it's not going to work. However, if I go back to the editor and remove those fonts, Installed fonts, theme spots. So let's remove the installed fonts. Okay, let's remove the installed fonts. Okay, so now I've got the theme fonts installed. All right, hope you're all following me on this. Um, so now if I set it to and now, it's, now it's not giving me an option to save because it's still the same name, which makes things tricky, which is fine. Let's turn to that. And let's save that. Right. And then let's write these changes. Done. Okay, and now I go back here. It's still pointing to those fonts. Okay. So that is specifically a create block theme thing. Um, so if you are a theme de developer and you're using create block theme to build your fonts, you should keep using managing your fonts here um, because then they will be will they be? Okay, let's delete some things here. I'll delete that. Delete that. Okay. I'm gonna go back to WordPress and freak it out because currently nothing's active. I'm going to activate 2024. Done. Okay. 
it has its own theme plants, that's fine. Uh, I'm going to go back into the editor and make sure there's no system fonts installed. No, there's an input. Oh, wait, that's different. Oh, because, oh, of course, because. See, now that's. Have to, okay, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> I just went off on a tangent in my head. All right, so let's go back to create block theme. Let's create a new black theme. Okay. Uh, now we're starting from scratch. Okay. Like that. Okay, so now if I manage my theme fonts, and I add a Google font to the theme. A pencil, for example, we'll just do a single variant. Um, okay, so that's now part of my theme fonts. All right, so if I go back to the editor, go back to styles, go back to typography, and I set the theme font, so, so and then save the changes to the files boom now if i go back into that theme and now it's in the assets in the theme don't okay so managing fonts via the new font library will store them install them system-wide for wordpress managing the fonts in create block theme will install them in the theme okay so that's good to know because, and I'll tell you why that's good to know, <laughs> for me at least, I'm busy working on uh, some content for Learn WordPress that is all around, well, I'm not working on it, one of my fellow contributors is working on it, all around create block theme and all those things. And one of the issues that we had, not issues, one of the content items we were working on was specifically um, the use of create block theme. And so I want to actually share this update with Cynthia, who is the contributor working on it, that um, the font library is only applicable to the site and not to the theme. So I just want to make that note here. Um, Check what that thing is called. Uh, manage the fonts. Yeah. Uh, welcome from Ecuador. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to leave that there for Cynthia. She can she can ask me about it. I might just update it with a link so she can see that happening. But that's useful to know. AJ said that's maybe why the font names are hash that don't clash. That's a very strong possibility um, because in in the theme you'll see they're not hashed. Um, so that is a that, that is a very very good call out there, um, Andrew. Sorry, not Ashley. <laughs> um, that's a very good call out. That's a very strong possibility why they're hashed like that. Why they're named like that. Um, so they don't clash with theme fonts. So that's useful to know. So if you're a theme developer, if you're using Create Block Theme to help develop your theme process, then use the Manage Theme Fonts in Create Block Theme to install your theme fonts to the theme. Um, the font library is very specifically 
um, I would say a user focused feature. It allows the user to add themes to their to their WordPress install. It's a very cool feature, I have to admit. Um, I love the way that it works. It works really, really well. Um, what I like about it is a theme developer, you can add your fonts as part of the theme, but then if users want to change the fonts or, or whatever they can do, um, and that's very, very cool. Um, it just kind of, it moves. What, what I think is, is interesting about it is more and more as I'm seeing um, the site editor development, it does move the ability, it does allow users more and more the ability to make changes to their site, um, which I know some theme developers are not huge fans of. Um, I'm like, it's the user site, let them change fonts if they want to. Uh, give them a full back to switch back if they want to, which is what the theme will do. Um, you know, if I, if I go into the styles here um, and I want to change the text, I can change it back to whatever the default was um, and then make that change. Um, just seems to be working now for some reason. Okay. Maybe there wasn't a default set for the theme or whatever, but uh, I have that fallback option. But allow the user to make a fun change if they want to. Make it easy. Why not? Um, says says I. <laughs> I don't know. I have this. I have this opinion. I've let them break their site, and then you can charge them to fix it. <laughs> if you're a developer, uh, maybe that's the wrong way to look at it. All right. So that's the font library. Uh, that's a cool, a cool addition coming. Um, Appearance tools for classic themes. Um, and lacking more creative control. I'm going to dive into that now. Revisions in the site editor. Uh, block attributes we did last week. Um, design tools. These are all very design tools. I'm not going to write too much about them. UX improvements. Go through those. Um, interactivity. Interactivity is something I haven't. I haven't. Uh, I did it in a, in a workshop a while ago, but it might be worth recovering, uh, recovering, um, looking into again. Um, so interactivity basically uh, is something that is added to um, doo -doo 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 -doo, added to blocks. Uh, let's see if we can find some documentation here. Previews of previous updated docs. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go to the updated docs. I have never used interactivity before. Well, I have, but I'm gonna act like I've never used it before, uh, and I'm going to dive straight into how that all works. So we're gonna build a block that demonstrates the interactivity API in WordPress. We need the node environment set up. Uh, we need to use the create block package um, and use the interactive template. So let's grab that. I do already have the Node.js environment set up. Um, so let's just get to that site. And then let's spin up a quick interactive block. So we'll just leave it my first word, my first interactive block, WordPress create block, interactive template query. That should all work. That's gonna take a few minutes. So while that's doing its thing, we can I'm actually gonna just pull this off screen. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to pull this off screen so I can read through the docs while that's installing. Um, yeah. So the basic use, you switch to the block, you run the dev server. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, we need a code editor, we need tools, we need a local site to get cool. So, Code requirements, add interactivity support to block JSON, the, to indicate block support activity, add this to the support of the block JSON file, okay. Add interactive element to a DOM element, so any kind of div or whatever the case may be, we need to add that. Um, and then we can start, we can start doing things, we can start playing with things and we can start using the API reference. So my block is still installing over here, so I'm going to check out the API reference along um, and start thinking about what we can build today with this. So, oh, it's all in, this used to all be in GitHub. It's no longer there anymore. It's now all part of um, the developer resources. Uh, it does say specifically 6.5 WordPress for Bev. So to add interactions to blocks using the interactivity API, developers can use directives, which are added to the markup to add a specific behavior to the DOM element of the block. And we can use a store which stores the logic of data needed for the behavior. Um, and then there's a nice graphic which shows how all these things work. Um, and here's an example where you can have 
uh, an is open a context directive. You can say is open is false. And then you can set up a watch. So you can check against callbacks log is open. And then obviously if you set something to true or set something to false, it'll it'll do whatever it needs to do. Um, okay, my block has been built according to that. Uh, I'm gonna grab a quick sip of water here. Actually going to pull this up as well. It's a very, very hot day here today. All right. So, <clears throat> let's have a look at the code that that generates. Oh, haha, I put it in the wrong place. <laughs> let's just move this to the plugins directory. Uh, I should have, I should have done that in the plugins directory. Uh, it's funny. Um, there we go. My phone just beeped at me. Um, all right, let's close down from JSON. And let's go and have a look. Let's... So there's the block, it's loading all of that, all well and good. Let's have a look at the block.json. Okay, it does already support interactivity because we use their interactivity template, so that's great. It also uses the ViewScript module, uh, which is the view.js file, which is where all the Cool things can happen. This is actually a new thing that came to 6.5 as well. So let's diverge into that very quickly. Um, okay, so up there, let's just find it over here. Um, yeah, just in here. It's not a script loader. Yes. So in WordPress 6.5, there's a script modules API, which brings native JavaScript module support to 6.5 and provides two modules for use with the interactivity API. Um, so there is a blog post about it. Uh, a new script modules interface has been introduced to support native JavaScript modules in WordPress. So if we open that up, um, there's a whole article about modules. Um, and basically, uh, so I think about providing mechanisms for splitting JavaScript programs up into separate modules that can be imported when needed. Now, if you've ever worked with a block plugin, you will have seen this, for example, uh, when you do things like this, when you import things in, um, and my understanding, I'll be honest, I don't have the most amount of knowledge around this, but my understanding is that doing these kinds of things required the build step. You needed to take that code and convert it and then everything compiled into one thing. And now more recently, browsers have started supporting the option that you can have. So in the old days, <laughs> everything was sitting in one big JavaScript file and you couldn't separate them out nicely. Um, and then JavaScript modules came along where you could physically take your code and put it into a separate location with JavaScript code and then import content features and functions and whatever from separate files. Um, so now, so they say this can be a good thing. Browsers can optimize loading of modules, make it more efficient than having to use a library and do all of that extra client-side processing. So this is all the history around modules and how they work. Uh, I'm going to share this one in the chat if anybody wants to read about how this works and the background of it and all of that. But essentially, this functionality allows us to specify our module here. Um, so in this case, it's the view script module. And then there is the view.js file, and it can then do all the things it needs to do. And basically, um, when you, so I discovered this when I was working on um, on my dodge game. So let me let me share that link with you quickly. Um, so this is a game that I developed sometime last year. It's using the interactivity API. Uh, when you start the game, I'm now busy moving the W with my keyboard and mouse. 
Um, and essentially what I discovered, I can actually just stop the game here. Uh, I don't need to worry about my score. I'm going to hop on over to my GitHub so you can see the code that I'm talking about. Um, Here's Dodge. Yeah, I think I just called it interactive game. Um, what I discovered was that I could make changes to the view script file um, without having to rerun the build step every time. Um, so that was a cool benefit from that process. Um, all of the stuff inside of the React part, the editor.js and all of that, I had to rebuild. Um, but the Vue.js, I could just, you know, use regular, regular JavaScript with it. I actually, I think I ended up uh, I ended up moving some of the JavaScript into a dodge.js file anyway, just to clean things up a bit. Um, but I probably could have registered that dodge file as a Vuescript module as well. So I kind of want to get back to that. Um, so anyway, if you're interested in all the history about how that works, there's all the reading. I recommend going to check it out. Um, you can read all about how it works. I'm not going to read through that now. But basically in your... So here's your activity. You set up supports into activity. You create a DOM element, um, and then off you go to the races. So the recommended way to do this is in a uh, what's known as a dynamic block. So in other words, you have a PHP file that is used to render the block's content and front end. Um, if you have created, where's that come up? If you've created your, your first block using the template, it'll actually set everything up for you. So it's the perfect way to get started. And it actually builds a block that already has some things happening. Um, so it has, uh, let's have a look here. It has this uh, is open false. It has the login is open. So it's essentially the code that we see from the, um, from the documentation. And then if we have a look at the Vue.js, so it basically uses the store and get context from the WordPress interactivity package. Um, and it then has a toggle action where it takes the context, checks if the context is open, and if it isn't, then switches it to whatever it is. So if it's true, it'll change to false. If it's false, it'll change to true. So that context is what is specified, where is that? Here, um, using the WP interactivity data WP context. This used to be something that you would set as a directive. Um, why don't you just check that in the API and see if there's an example of the context. Yeah, you see, you can you can set your context this way. So you can set the WP data, WP context directive, and then you can give it um, a JSON object. But it looks like they've also added this WP interactivity data, WP context um, function, which is quite interesting, so I want to check that out. Um, oh, it's actually on the same page. Uh, let's find that. So that returns a stringified JSON of context directive. This function is the recommended way to print the data context attribute on the server-side markup. Um, so that's, that's interesting that they've done that. It'd be interesting to know why they did that. I don't mind either way. Uh, maybe just to prevent folks having to write all this out. Um, so it's just a single PHP file, PHP function call. Um, so that's that's very interesting. This helper function simplifies the creation of w data to the context directories by providing a way to pass an array of data, which encodes to a JSON string. So probably that you want folk, you want to be able to set up your data in PHP maybe. And this is an easier way to do that. So you get it from PHP somewhere and then you would put it in. So that's kind of cool. Um, so let's have a look at what this block does so we can kind of see this in action. Uh, so let's go over to plugins. But you are, but the music is getting a little bit loud. So I'm going to turn it down a little bit. Okay, let's activate the block uh, and let's pop it into a post. Oh look, my font is still working. <laughs> uh, add that to a post. Uh, this interactive block. So there, there's nothing in the editor, which is fine. I want to see what this does on the front end. So there's my toggle button. And hey, there's my content appearing. Um, 
So if you remember the old jQuery days, we used to have jQuery bind events and we used to bind to buttons and we used to then trigger things. This reminds me of that very much, uh, just a lot sort of simpler. Um, so because the context initially is set is, is, is false, is, sorry, is false, is open, is set to false, it then watches um, the log is open callback. So this, this wrapper div is watching. So if I go over to that one, let's show you what that's doing. So log is open as a callback. It gets the is open from the context and just logs it out. So that's just happening every time that the, the context changes. So let me open up. Uh, so there you go, is open true, is open false. So there we go, boom, boom, boom. That's all that's doing. Um, and so the core work is this toggle action, which is specified in the code. So I can call that pretty much anything. So let's do it this way. Let's say um, unpick actions toggle open, for example. Uh, and I can then change this to toggle open, and I think this will just work. I don't even have to run a bot. Let's let's verify that. Um, just reload it, and theoretically this should work. Yay, it works. So you see, no build step required. Uh, it's using standard JavaScript modules, which means it will just work. Uh, I'm importing modules from a package that just works, which is cool. Um, and I didn't have to. I didn't have to. I'm not running any build step for this. Um, it just, it's loaded in the browser. So it's using more modern JavaScript functionality without the, the necessity of a build step. Um, but what that is essentially doing is it's, it's uh, setting up the context, it's false. It's then setting the button, binding to the click event. And when the button is clicked, it triggers the talk, triggers, triggers. You can tell I'm excited. I'm talking fast and messing up my words. It triggers the toggle open action which is defined inside the store. So inside the store here, you'll see that I need to specify a namespace for the store, which is specified here on when we set the interact the data, data WP interactive directive, that's where we set the namespace. Um, and then based on the namespace, this code all belongs to that namespace. And then when it triggers the toggle open action, it calls this code, the code gets the context and then switches to the context from true to false. Then the uh, hidden directive is bound to the paragraph tag. And that one is set to whether is open is true or false, whether or not we show or hide it. So if hidden is true, in other words, not is open because in open here it starts with false. Uh, so hidden at this when it starts, hidden will be false. So uh, sorry, hidden will be true. So it hides it. And then as soon as we trick on the button, Trigger, trigger the button, it runs the toggle open, which will then get the context, update the context, and then show the button. Um, so that's kind of how all that works uh, in this space. And it's all built in, it's all native to WordPress. I don't need any additional jQuery, I don't need any additional libraries, it's all built into WordPress. Uh, I think it's very, very cool. I'm quite keen to play with this a bit more. As I say, I played with this with a dodge game, I was binding to, to keyboard events. And I was binding to, um, oh, I've closed it down already. I was binding to other kinds of events. It did make that process a lot easier. So to run through the kinds of things that you can do, um, there is the context that we spoke about. There is the bind. So it allows you to uh, set HTML attributes on elements based on Boolean or string value. So you can bind to a click, you can bind aria expanded, you can bind hidden. Um, there's a whole bunch of options there. <clears throat> there is a WP class directive. So you can specify the class name is selected or is, is selected and then do things based on whether it adds or removes a class. So you can add or remove a class. Uh, you can add or remove styles. So you can use the style attribute and specify color, for example, and then it will apply, apply that color. Um, there is text. You can set the inner text of, element, of an element. Um, so here, for example, the spans text is receiving the text from the context. The context is set up here as text text one. Um, you can then have some kind of action which updates the text content. And on the click, it'll then update the content. Um, that could be quite a cool one to, to fiddle with at some point. Um, and then there's things like on events, so on click, on key up, on key down, all those kind of things. Um, so there's a lot that there's a lot available there. Um, I really, I'm looking for something that I can, that I can play with, that I can build with on this. 
but uh, somebody who has been interacting with me a while back actually shared, I want to find it very quickly, there was a little example that he that he built. Uh, so I want to find that and share it with you all. Um, now I'm not going to find it, am I? <laughs> uh, here we go. Um, actually, I think, he sh I think he shared it on my Twitter. Let me find my Twitter feed. Um, so let me just pull this to one side. Give me a second here, folks. Um, yeah. So his name is Elliot Richmond. He is a WordPress developer like myself. He's also a Baldy like myself. Um, and he created this uh, interactivity API uh, tutorial. So do check that out. Um, there's some, there's some, he actually goes and builds something with it. Uh, so let me share that link with you in the chat. You can check that out. Give Elliot a like and a subscribe maybe um, because I think he's, he's doing some fun things there. So that's also some examples of how that all works. Um, so yes, I'm quite, I'm quite excited about interactivity and what it can do. Um, so give that, give that a look. All right, uh, I'm going to close this down and move on to something else. What else can we play with? Um, let's have a look see here. So that was interactivity. Looking very specifically for like word developer -y things, things that require me to write code. Um, block bindings we did last week. Uh, let me go back up to the list of things here. Script modules API we discussed. HTML I updates. Mm. Allowed blocks field specify to specify allowed children. That's interesting. Um, new style sheet support for block choice. What's that? Find a style sheet for your blocks via the new style property. Hmm. Front end only block styles. Okay. Block scripts, there was already script, view script, and editor script. Block style, there was only style and editor style. Oh, so now you can actually have an ooh, ooh, ooh. This is super small, but it's one of my biggest annoyances about building blocks. So, that's cool. Okay. Uh, can you tell I'm excited? <laughs> Let's build a quick block and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Um, So, I just want to do a standard block. I love it when I find stuff that I want. Uh, so let's go, um, let's go WP static block. Okay, so that's going to create a block for me. While that's doing that, I'm going to Disable interactivity. Right. Um, static block is busy being rendered. Okay, installing packages. Now I've got a feeling that create block won't have this support built in because create block probably hasn't been updated, which is fine because that gives us an example of what we're working with. Um, so let's have a look here where we go. Wow, this has been open since September 2023. That's amazing. Okay. Come on, build a block. <laughs> oh dear. Sometimes this happens so quickly and sometimes this takes so much time. Um, 
Pronto, que você não conhece. Né? Yeah. Okay. There's my block. Cool. Okay, let's close all this down. Okay. So let's go into here. Let's go into block JSON. Okay, so it's not okay, awesome. So previously previously on WordPress. <laughs> when you built a block, you had the editor.scss file, which is applied to the editor only. And you had the style.scss file, which is applied to both the front end and the editor. So if you wanted something to only be applied to the front end, you had to apply it to this file and then get overridden in the editor, which is annoying, right? Uh, no, I don't want a file watcher. I'm going to use something else. So when you're working with your block, uh, let's go over here and let's activate the plugin. Which I'll run the build server as well. So let's add the block some way. There's my static block. Yeah, so my static block in the editor has the border, the blue, the blue background, whatever. It has a red dotted border. You can't really see it there. And if I go into the front end, it has no border. So let's make the border a bit bigger so we can see it. Uh, let's make the border five pixels. And while we're here, yeah, it's fine. So let's refresh this. Okay, so there you can see the dotted border, um, and on the front end, there is no border. So the way to the way to achieve that is to specify background color, color padding, install the CSS, and then your editor the CSS you apply the border. Now the annoying thing about that is in the editor, it then means <clears throat> um, See somebody's asked me an interactivity thing. I'll, I'll answer your question in a second. Um, it then means that you have. Uh, let me search for this quickly. You have two style sheets uh, in queued. Um, I think they're probably going to be in the footer. Just do a quick search here. Static. Yeah, there you go. So you end up with I'm just thinking here, no? Static block this. Yeah, there we go. So you end up with two CSS files. Your style.index and your index.css. And if we have a look at those, there's the one that gets applied in both. And then we have that go down. And then the index only gets applied in the editor. So you're essentially overriding. If you if you need to make specific changes, you have to override the one in the other. Um, let's pause on that and get back to Art Senna's question around can this interactivity interact with an external API source, for example, the Pokemon API? Um, I don't know the Pokemon API. I guess it's an external REST API of some kind. I'm not going to go search it now. I don't know what it is, but essentially, yes, you should be able to. Um, if it's if it's just if it's just a let's go back there. View. If it's just a external API of some kind, you can probably use the API fetch, pa API fetch package. Um, I wouldn't say that's related to interactivity. That's just a built-in package in WordPress, uh, the API fetch package, for example. And you could use that to make requests to any external API, if it's, as long as it's an API that returns JSON data, uh, like a REST API. So essentially, yes, you should be able to use it there. Um, I hope that answers your question. Okay, so getting back to this now. So let me show you a simple example of what I'm talking about. Um, let's close that. 
So let's say I want a specific border in the editor and a specific border in the front end. I then have to, so let's say I do the, let's just do the dotted border here and we'll see what I'm talking about. I'll remove the dotted border there and then remove it from editor to CSS. Okay. And I'm going to let this all build and then we refresh. So there it is in the in the editor. If I preview this, it's on the front end because it's in that one file. But if I want something different in the editor, then I need to I'm specifically going to go with border. So let's say we wanted one five pixel solid, for example, in the editor. Um, there we go. And let's do a quick refresh. Let's close this and let's go on. Uh, let's do a quick refresh there. So if you now inspect this, you'll see that there, the static block dotted style from the style that is is applied and then overridden by the editor CSS. I would prefer it if I didn't have to have the dotted one twice and only the dotted one applied in one place and the regular border applied in the other place. We can now do that with the view style option which is very, very cool. <laughs> so I'm going to do that now. Uh, so it's a view style property. Um, so if we go here, so there's editor style and there's style. So now what I can do, so let's do this. So let's say, I'm gonna have to get this to full. So what I could do is I could just do that. I could do that. Actually, what might be better is if I do the view style. And then I wonder what's going to, so that's edit SSS, that's style that SSS. So let's create one called um, it's called view.scss. I think that'll work. Um, let's go back to the block thing. Just remove this. I just want to see what it generates. I'm guessing it's going to work. So style can be the background color. In the editor, we want a solid. In the front end, we want the border, the dotted one. So this will be front end only. Let's just make another quick one. Applied on the front end only. Okay, and this one I want the dotted. What are we doing? Solid in the editor. No, I want dotted in the editor and solid in the front end. Okay. <laughs> there we go. So that's view, that's editor, that's the style, which look, that can be both, so that's cool. So what I want to do now is I want to see what that builds. Uh, it should have run already, yeah. So in build, I should now have... Hmm. What is it? It doesn't seem to build. How do I tell it to build the new view style? Hmm. That works. I need to specify it. So I wonder if it's the case of view, some similar to view 
scripts will be viewed at CSS. So it must be. Maybe that's when, yeah. Guessing that's gonna work. I think either I'm naming this incorrectly, so it's going to be a style. Please do our construct. See if there's any documentation. Block view. I need to create hyphen V. Star hyphen V. Maybe that'll do it. I'm guessing I need to give it a specific name. What I'm literally trying to do is trying to figure out what do when if WordPress scripts isn't updated yet. Hmm. That might be a possibility. Yes, this is should be. Hmm. 
see what I can find. Uh, so I don't I feel like I should have looked. Yeah, should have, that should have actually worked. Looks like it should have worked. I wonder if I'm naming the source file. I feel like I'm doing it right. I wonder if the... What version of WordPress scripts is it? That is the latest version. So I'm kind of stumped with that one. Uh, I'm going to have to make a note of that and go digging a little bit further. Uh, looks like this should have just worked. Um, created the view style to look for, I would assume, a view that it's CSS file, which the build process would create from the view of CSS. And Senna says, can I use the block editor for any kind of themes? Example, if I switch with any kind of themes, it still preserve my page that I designed using block editor. Um, as far as I know, as long as the theme supports the block editor, you should be fine. Um, that having been said, one of the benefits of using the block editor is that it just renders HTML at the end of the day. Um, so your content should still be there. Uh, Let's take a break and test them. Why not? <laughs> uh, because I'm stumped here. So let's go and do a test. Um, let's go into my uh, my site and let's go and apply a block theme. And let's delete that. Let's delete that. And let's go into themes and let's apply 2024. Um, Let's go to pages and I'm going to delete these pages because these were created when I was testing the commerce the other day. Shark trash, my account, check out, cart. So this is my site. Let's just visit it quickly. There it is, WordPress. Uh, let's go back to dashboard. Let's go create a page. Let's add a new page. Uh, let's just use one of these templates. Why not? I'm giving us all these template options. Um, RSVP, there we go. RSVP, there we go. <laughs> so this is a block template that I've been got. It's got all the content. I couldn't be bothered to redesign one now. So let's publish that page. Um, and then let's view that page. And this is what it looks like. It has all the block content uh, that I imported. So there we go, reserve a spot, link to something. So now let us go to back to themes. Uh, and let's install an old theme. Let's install like 2016 or something. Uh, like that. Uh, for the 20s. Oh, and, and first. Uh, so let's go 16. Uh, so there's 2016. Let's install it. Why not? YOLO. Um, Oh, 
activate it. Uh, and let's go back to the pages. So there's my RSVP page. Okay, it looks slightly different because obviously the theme will apply its own its own theme styles, but the content is still there, the button is still there, um, the image is still there. So you won't lose any data, but you'll lose possibly what it looks like if you if you change themes. Um, cool, I hope that answered your question. <laughs> All right. Um, Folks, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna bring this to an end now. Um, I was really hoping that I could figure out the view style thing. Uh, I'm gonna make a note and dive into this a little bit further uh, after this call, after this live stream, and see what I was doing wrong there. Um, and I might just try and record the updates as to what I was doing wrong. Because as far as I can tell, I'm doing everything right. I've said everything correctly. It's probably just a file name thing or an update thing or something that's missing somewhere. Um, so I'm going to go find that out and, and I'll try and record a quick snippet and I'll add it to this video. And then I will upload this video to YouTube in a couple of days, or at least to WordPress TV in a couple of days, to YouTube in a couple of days, and I'll share it with you if you want to watch it, if you weren't able to join me live. Um, so once again, if you're wanting to see some of all the new things coming to WordPress, I do recommend checking out Anne's Source of Truth. Always a good place to start. Um, I also do check uh, recommend checking out WordPress Developer Resources, or sorry, WordPress Developer News, which is at developer.wordpress.org slash news. Uh, the What's New Developers link is the very first article there, so I do recommend checking that one out. And that'll give you an idea as to what's coming for WordPress. Uh, there's loads more, as you can see from, from and Source of Truth. There's just lists and lists and lists of cool things coming. Um, there's, there's designer related features, there's developer related features, there's core data API things coming. Um, revisions in the site editor, uh, block bindings, um, just all kinds of fun stuff coming. So do check that out. Um, make sure you test your plugins and your themes in WordPress 6.5. That's actually something I need to do. I haven't had a chance to do that, so I need to do that at some point. Um, so all the information you might need is there. Oh, there's the upcoming dev notes. I could have just grabbed it from there. <laughs> um, cool. So those of you who um, are having fun testing WordPress 6.5, let me know what you think of some of these cool new features. You can find me all over the place. My blog is just my name, jonathanbossinger.com. Uh, I'm on Twitter at john underscore Bossinger. I'm on Mastodon um, somewhere. There's the link there. I'm on GitHub. You can connect with me via WordPress in the WordPress Slack. Um, I do I do recommend um, if you need to ask me anything, find me there. Uh, Arsene I hope that was useful. Uh, it's, it's, I recommend, look, the block editor, the block uh, the post editor, the page editor, the site editor, it is the feature of WordPress. Uh, so I do recommend checking it out. Um, I use it exclusively on my sites. I have fun with it. Uh, I'll be honest, I don't build live sites anymore. Uh, but if I was, I, I would build it. There is a project that I want to um, re... What's the word I'm looking for? Reignite this year. There was a, it was a live stream project I was working on last year. We were building a theme in the block editor. Uh, it's called Sending. I want to reinvigorate that this year and start picking that up. So hopefully folks will get a good idea of what's happening there. Uh, but yes, if you're if you're if you're holding back on learning the block editor, now is a good time. It's it's really become robust into what it can do and how it works. Uh, and so I do recommend checking that out. Okay. For the rest of you all, uh, thank you for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Friday, rest of your weekend. Um, and I'll see you again in two weeks time for another live stream where I'm probably going to be testing out the WordPress Playground uh, local environment. If you don't know what WP Playground is, it's a way to set up a local WordPress environment that runs in the browser. Uh, it's had a lot of development done to it recently. So I think I'm gonna spend some time checking that out again, seeing what it's doing, where it is. Um, so in two weeks time, that'll be where we're now, we're in March, so it'll be sometime in April. Ooh, I have to check my dates here because I'm going to be away from, I'm going to be away from the 15th to the 18th of April, I think it is. So I think the next live stream will probably happen around about the 4th of April. Um, yeah. So probably around about the 4th of April, but keep an eye on the Meetup page. Keep an eye on, on uh, the Learn WordPress site um, and do join me for that. Otherwise, enjoy your Friday, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Uh, and yeah, go forth and have fun with the coming features to WordPress 6.5. Bye.